I, I've set up, I've pulled out all the important information so that I'm not conflating it with all the other stuff in the question that's irrelevant, right? So I've pulled it all out, I've got two locations. I've got a departure time and an arrival time. I've also noted the days of the departure and the arrival time because they will factor in a little bit later. And then I thought about, well, okay, what question are they asking and therefore what information is relevant? The first question is about time difference. If all you're thinking about is the time difference between two locations, you've got latitude and longitude, but only one of them is important. Which one? Only longitude, right? We know that if you've got two places on the same meridian of longitude, it doesn't matter how far north or south you are of the equator, they'll be the same time. So I can actually ignore these guys for the rest of the question. These are the things that matter. So you can see in order to work out a time difference, I first have to work out a longitude difference. Uh, the way that I've gone about it is I've remembered that for each one of these degrees of difference, each degree represents four minutes. If I multiply by 4, I get that amount of time, and then I divide it by 60 to be able to work out in hours and minutes. But I will mention, just like at the beginning, if we th think about 24 hours and 360 degrees of rotation, then each hour, because that's where I'm going to go, each hour is 15 degrees of longitude. So you know how I multiplied by 4 and then I divided by 15. I haven't written it, but that's what I've done. Okay? Uh, sorry, divided by 60, rather, because that's how many minutes there are in an hour. Multiplying by 4 and dividing by 15 is the same as going from this number and just... I keep on saying 15. Multiplying by 4 and dividing by 60 is the same as taking this number and dividing by 15. And if you want, you can get your calculator, do 139 divided by 15, and you'll get 9.2 something, something, something. Okay, And that's the number of hours. Remember, you can hit that degrees, minutes, seconds button, and it will convert you to this no approximation required. Cool. So we've got a time difference between the two cities. Therefore, the next question says, calculate the time in Sydney when the plane left Rome. So what they're trying to lean us toward is, let's forget about Rome time. Let's think about everything in terms of Sydney time because, you know, we're awesome in the center of the world. So have a look at the way that I've formatted this in here. And again, um, on your working out, please communicate what you're doing. You're working out Sydney time. Don't just start writing down some times and adding and subtracting things. Tell me what you're working out. I've also noted the day, even though in this case, the time difference that we add doesn't actually change the day that we're on, but it could have, could have just as easily have done that. If this was 26 minutes instead of 16 minutes, then it'd be on uh, Monday, you know, uh, whatever. 12.06 a.m. on a Monday morning, okay? So I've noted the time and the day, and here comes the tricky part. What's the flight time? That's, that's the question, total flight time. So I want to show you what my working looks like and then explain it. This actually is the last thing that I wrote. I should have put it at the end, so I'll move it in a minute. Or second last. This diagram here is the important part. And you don't have to draw a diagram to do this part successfully. I just think it's a lot easier so you don't get twisted in your head. When do I add, subtract? What am I missing in here? Is it 12 or 24 hours? Those kinds of things. In terms of Sydney time, because that's what part two just did. It got everything in Sydney time. I'm leaving Rome at this time on this day. And I'm arriving at this time on this day. And there's Sunday, then Monday, then Tuesday. So what I've worked out is, for each of those three days, how many minutes and hours are there? It only takes four minutes to get out of Sunday. Because you're at 11.56 p.m. Uh, the entirety of Monday is included in this departure arrival time. So I've put down 24 hours. And then on Tuesday morning, 1.15 a.m., so one hour and 15 minutes have passed on that day. So if you take all of that, the time between arrival and departure is that. That's the sum. Okay. But they've asked for flight time. Flight time, not just what was the difference between walking onto the plane and off the final plane. So therefore, I've subtracted the six hours that were included in that layover, and that's what gives you your final answer. 